Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I will be your host. And in this episode, Tracy Heinrichs is going to tell us about um, her recent travels on three different cruise lines over the past two months. We're all going to sit here and feel sorry for her. <laughs> I'm joined at the table by our panel of experts, Client Services Manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. Agent Consultant for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Tracy Heinrichs. Hi, everyone. And back in our production facility, we have our producer, Craig Williams. Hello. Again, thank you all for joining us. Um, very exciting. Tracy and her husband, Chris, in the past two months. No, not quite. Chris didn't go? No, <laughs> Chris did go. Wasn't, <laughs> I did oh not God. go with somebody else because that would have been a story. <laughs> but it wasn't in the past two months. It was oh. three cruises in two months, one of them being our Alaska cruise. Okay. In any event, <laughs> within two months. <laughs> well, you know people are going to call us on accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> She's been on Disney Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, and Celebrity Cruise Line. Um, so yeah, terrible, terrible life that she has. Yes, horrible. Poor me. Poor, poor Tracy. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was nice of her to do this for you, the viewers. Yeah, I, had, I took one for the team. <laughs> Very <laughs> altruistic. <laughs> oh, altruistic of her. But this is exciting because we get this question a lot. What's better? What's the better cruise line? What should I choose? What has the better kids program? What has the better entertainment? Right. So I think this is a great way of giving people sort of this overview comparison of the cruise lines. Now, one of the things I do want to mention going into it, we're not going to get into nitpicky stuff. We're not going to talk about accommodations mm -hmm. because those are they're so very, specific to a ship, right? Right. Very variable yeah. for the ship. We're not going to talk about itineraries because you're on different itineraries. Mm -hmm. So things like that don't matter. We're going to get into, like I mentioned, entertainment, a little bit about the food, um, things like that. So where do you want to start? What do you want to tell us about first? Let's just, I'll tell you first of all the three ships I was on. So it just happened that we had our Alaska group. And then the month after that was our 10th anniversary. So we were planning a celebrity cruise. And then something came up for work that I had the opportunity to go on a Disney cruise for, it was a quick two night out of San Diego. And it was on the Wonder and I hadn't been on the Wonder for a while. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do that too. And it just, it just kind of happened that this is the way it worked out. But when it happened, I thought, what a great thing to do a show about. Because all three of them doing them that close, you kind of start to make I think more closer comparisons mm -hmm. as opposed to like a year ago I was on this ship. Right. Or, so they were all very close. So it was a snapshot and they were very different itineraries, which is why we're not going to talk about them because I think different itineraries bring um, different demographics of people. Um, when you're talking about celebrity and Royal Caribbean, especially talking about accommodations is hard because that can vary so much from ship to ship. So just in general, talking about the cruise lines and what I liked about each one. And keep in mind, this is a snapshot of what we did right. over these three cruise lines. Your experience, your mileage may be a little bit different than mine was, but I can only tell you what we experienced over these three. Also, cruises. ship to ship is different. Exactly. When it comes to any of these Itinerary. things. There's so many variables that this is not going to be, this is not the gospel. Like, right. you know, this isn't. You could have, excuse me, you can even what have happened? different experiences. Um on the same ship at two different exactly. times. Exactly. Exactly true. So that was kind of like, that's kind of what the background was. Did we mention the ships you were on? Disney I was on, line? we did Royal Caribbean on the Explorer of the Seas Explorer. to Alaska. We did Celebrity Equinox, which was a Western Caribbean. Um, and I had done the Disney Wonder, which was the two night at a San Diego. Some serious frequent flyer miles. There was. All coach. <laughs> and you were on the Western Caribbean prior to the hurricanes, Correct. That is correct. This was August. Mm -hmm. So this was before. Now we did San Diego um, mid-ish September because we, we did Vegas right after San Diego, and that was a week before the Vegas shootings. So the right around that time. people listening just defeat now feel even more sorry for you. I know. It's true. Three ships in Vegas. Yeah. So, all right, let's start with hmm, – how should we start? I know. Let's start with sort of the big picture. Right. Okay, the big picture, the big comparison, just in general, which one was better? Celebrity. We got to get a celebrity cruise. I got to tell you, and I know I had done the show because I had done one and I was so excited about it. And then, so I was bringing my husband on the second one and it was our anniversary. It was the 10th, there was pressure and I had built it up so much. And I thought, oh, you know, there's that moment where you think, okay, can this deliver? And boy, did it deliver. <laughs> we loved it. And you know what it really did? It ignited Chris's excitement about cruising again because Chris is Chris kind of goes along for the ride a little bit when it comes to cruising he also gets seasick he does yeah, he does and he has very deal. legitimate reasons for 
you know, it really kind of has to wow him to get over that first night and last night where he has motion issues. Um, but he loved it just as much as I hoped he would. What were the top reasons that Celebrity was the best you picked? Uh, food, entertainment, um, and just overall the ship, the feeling of the ship. Just feeling like this was a space for us as two adults um, felt like... We just loved it. We just mm-hmm. felt like it worked with us. Um, so, celebrity. So, um, let's go and let's look at those things individually. Sure. Um, we have a future show planned where Chase is going to go into the food uh, a little bit more in depth and talk in about re- with her dietary issue. Mm-hmm. But in general, why was Celebrity better food wise? Was it quality? Was it? It was. I uh, found that the main dining room in Celebrity was more equivalent to what we were experiencing with Disney. Um, Disney's main dining room, they're giving you already good cuts of meat. They're giving you, they're putting their best foot forward in the main dining room. Royal Caribbean, I feel, in their main dining room is kind of just giving you the bare minimum. Yeah, I've never been impressed with Royal Caribbean. You know, I feel like Royal Caribbean's main dining, Royal Caribbean's focus is to get you into these specialty Mm. restaurants, which they do well. They have many of them. Whereas Disney, they don't, they don't have options for you to go to specialty except they have Palo, but that's adult only. So Royal, or Disney really doesn't have other options. So they make the main dining room a major experience. And I found Celebrity got us closest to that. Celebrity still has specialty restaurants on board. Um, but it didn't feel like it was such a big difference between the specialty restaurants and the main dining room. So dining for one, I love the buffet area on Celebrity. Um, what we had experienced on our first cruise, having, you know, the buffet has at dinner time, I was picking my cut of meat that they were grilling for me. Mm-hmm. Um, they have sandwich making station. They had a pizza and pasta making station. Um, I, so I found overall the quality of what they were offering and the variety of what they were offering, um, the food to be superior on celebrity awesome i would say disney if i'm rating them one two three which i'll probably do a little bit through this show celebrity one uh disney two royal caribbean three did you eat at uh, the disney ship you had a short cruise so there was no specialty restaurants on the disney Correct. cruise did you eat in so- specialty restaurants on both celebrity and royal i did anything you can compare like where they did were they two steakhouses where you compare the quality no we didn't do both we didn't do the steakhouse on the celebrity they had a an Asian themed restaurant, which we tried and we really loved. Um, thought it was really, really well done. Um, we checked out the menus and what they were doing. I had done their steakhouse on another sailing and enjoyed it. Um, I thought our Royal Caribbean cruise was kind of lacking with the specialty restaurant. Yeah. I thought it wasn't up to what I was expecting and what I had experienced on other cruises. Like I thought chops on our Royal Caribbean cruise was significantly lesser. Stinko. Right. Holy you know, moly, we so I, I kind of was worried a little, I, like I feel like on that ship, especially even the specialty, I think dining in general dropped a peg for me with Royal Caribbean. Um, not to say that there weren't some good options. Mm-hmm. I like the way Royal Caribbean does their buffet area. You know, if we're, if we're talking outside of main dining room and specialty, you know, Disney, I don't think it's fair to put them in the equation with specialty. Yeah. Um, Let's talk but, a little bit, though, going back to buffet. Didn't the Royal Caribbean ship, wasn't the buffet a mess on that kind of It was kind of chaotic. Yeah. Um, but still better, I think, than what Disney was doing. I was just, I know on the Wonder anyway, you go to this the buffet and it seems kind of crowded in there. Um, and I think you get used to the dream and fantasy where it's a little bit yeah, more those big, large big and spread cabanas, out. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm comparing that, celebrity hands down in the buffet area for sure. And we did a lot of our meals there. And it wasn't about the quantity of food. It was just about the fact that you could kind of get what you wanted. And you didn't have that ceremony of dinner which we do my time dining or, you know, whatever it's, it's called on the different ships. Disney doesn't offer that, so you're kind of set to that dining right. time um, because we like to kind of eat when we want to eat, and I don't necessarily need it to be two hours. Yep. Um, so, well, you know... Disney it, has made dinners part of the show. Absolutely. And they've done an excellent yes, job at exactly. that. And if Disney, that's what you're looking for, yep. that's great. Nobody does it like Disney. Right. In conjunction with the... Of food itself. What about service? Because one of the things we hear all the time is Royal uh, Disney is the pinnacle of service, and it's you know the gold <laughs> standard. Yeah, so, I would still agree. I would still, and even though I was only on a two night, 
when the when we got on the Disney ship and we were sitting down to the embarkation lunch, we try to do that as opposed to the buffet embarkation, just because it seems a little less chaotic. Yeah. Um, and we sat down to that lunch. Very quickly, you're like, oh yeah, this is Disney, and that we and the Disney was the third cruise we had done. Um, so both Chris and I instantly, just the way the server approached us at lunch, you knew you were on a Disney ship. Mm-hmm. It's different. It is a level above what everybody else is doing. I thought Celebrity was good, but they don't get they at don't Disney, get close to Disney what Disney's service. doing as far as the Disney service, the Disney difference. Um, it's it's still there. Excellent. So the other thing I think, just in general, not doing celebrity, I would think Disney's entertainment would be best, although I am not an entertainment person at all. Right. On any of the ships we go on, I don't go to any of the shows. Right. Did you find that to be true? Um, For me, I would put celebrity one wow. on this, and that's only Incredible. because, I have to qualify that, we were, not, we were two adults, we were no kids. I have cruised Disney... I'm going to guess 16 to 18 times. I've seen the shows. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was, they did do a new one on this. They did the Frozen show on The Wonder, which we had not seen. And I thought that was really well done. And I can't tell you how much I dislike that movie. <laughs> but I thought that show was really well done. <laughs> there are yeah, there are no words to describe how over that movie I am. But I thought the show on there was really well done. So it was nice cool. to see something different. Um, I think nobody does the Disney theater evening shows like Disney. I mean, these are full Broadway productions. Except for one thing. They don't change often enough for a frequent cruiser too. And you can even be excited about it a couple times. Right. After that, it's like, yeah. And in my opinion, there's not enough other choices. Right. While there might be, you know, a, a, musical duo or something in one of the lounges. Yeah. They might bring in a comedian or something. The odd time you're kind of, I find the Disney routine, like on the Wonder, in one of the restaurants we were in, I was still able to get, I think what I probably ordered in that same restaurant like six cruises ago. Oh, wow. Do you yeah. know, like things just don't change enough for me. And that being said, I have clients who cruise Disney three, four, or five times a year. Because they like the things. Because the they same. like that about it. So mm. I think, like I said in the beginning, this is my viewpoint. I need things to change a little bit more than that. So for me... Disney starts to feel a little been there, done that. I also agree with you that John and I, like, we don't want every evening's meal to be the event. Right. So that sometimes we end up in the buffet getting a cheeseburger because we can go have eat in a half hour. You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't have to be an event. And with Disney, excuse me, if you're not doing the event that is dinner, there are not a lot of other options. You've got chicken fingers or pizza pretty much. Right. You've got the quick service up atop. You some nights have the buffet, but you can't. Re- it's not there all the time. It's not. You know, Disney doesn't do the dinner buffet every single night. Right. So you know, the event is kind of part of the cruise. Um, so for us, especially it's on the Wonder always, and the Magic, where yeah. the Dis- the fantasy and the dream now have sort of expanded food options mm-hmm. up on deck with mm-hmm. flows and things like that. The Magic and the Wonder have still restricted. Yeah. Did you see any of the other entertainment on Celebrity and Royal Caribbean? On other Celebrity, than- we went to a show every night. And I cannot tell you the last time I did that on a cruise. Wow. What and were the shows? What were they like? They were not always, I mean, I don't know, on land. I would have paid big bucks to see it, for a ticket to see any of these shows. But they had brought on a, a group of, I forget what they called them, but it was four guys. Similar to kind of like a four, the four season show what is it called like frankie valley frankie valley yeah. um you know so that type of show they brought on guys who actually travel doing that show like they jersey were, boys kind jersey of thing? boys type thing so they did a show one night which we really enjoyed they had um they had part of their regular troupe they had brought on um like an aerial act uh two couples that would do and so they had a whole show one night that was that um their own entertainment we thought they did their own special show i don't it's not a disney show of course but it had its own storyline and sometimes they do sort of a um, fairy tale ish right and so and we enjoyed everything they had done um they brought on a comedian one night and he was sort of funny but spent a lot of time telling us why he was way too important to be on a ship (laughs) so you know so he got old a little quick but we went every single evening kevin talks to me in the car on the way (laughs) recording the show i am way too busy i I am yeah exactly (laughs) Do you know who I am? Um, so, you know, every night we were entertained. And that is um, unique for us. Because I have to tell you, I've tried the, sh- the shows 
on Royal Caribbean. Well, yeah, real bad. And man, you usually just end up feeling really sorry for the people who have to perform them. Like, but the thing I like about Royal Caribbean is they do the Broadway shows too. They do, and the you know when they do the Broadway shows, I find that they're really well done. Uh-huh. Um, but outside of that, the other nights you're kind oh, of yeah, scrambling, right? And so they definitely have some. And I think Royal Caribbean, especially on the newer ships, is re- I think they know that's an issue mm-hmm. and they're working on improving it. Um, but if I had to rate for me, Celebrity was one, Disney two, and Royal Caribbean three. Now, what about other entertainment? Did you go and listen to uh, any? Yes, stuff that's what we loved about Celebrity too. Was there were several bars and lounges on board, and that's we're kind of getting to that age that that's kind of what we want to do in an evening. We want to sit down, maybe listen to the guy at the piano, or or there was a uh, guy with a guitar in the one lounge. Trixie's every gone night. from forty to sixty-five, <laughs> like flat, <laughs> like three I months. Know, it's true, <laughs> it's true. But we like listening to live entertainment. We um, the atrium of the Celebrity Ship had a band that played there every night. And the way that it, the ship was designed, there were multiple levels where you could sit and have a drink and enjoy the band. There was the guy playing in the one pub um, playing the guitar. He was fantastic. Like, we really enjoyed He was singing current stuff. Yeah. We really enjoyed him. And what we loved was every lounge and bar had a different theme. It had different music playing. It had different drink menus. So it felt like we had different venues to go to as opposed to maybe going on a different ship where you could go to six different bars, but they were all doing the same thing. Mm. You know, there wasn't, there was nothing unique about each one. So that was one thing we enjoyed on Celebrity. We found ourselves on the Disney ship, like, okay, well, now where do we go? Like looking for, we like to find a public place to sit where we can kind of people watch, maybe enjoy a drink. We, we struggled a little bit with that on the one. That's what we like about Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They have the, um. The, the, uh, promenade. the promenade, promenade, yep. And you just sit and watch the world go by. Yep, exactly. Um, all right, so those are sort of specific things. Not specific. Those are sort of the general things that mm-hmm. most people would participate in. What about more specifically things like kids programs? Now you mm-hmm. didn't have kids. You didn't bring kids on the ship. We didn't. So, I, but I do make a point when I go on a ship that first day you always have a couple hours where you can go and see the kids areas um, before they become official programs. So we always make a point of doing that. So with, we did it with Royal Caribbean on the Explorer. I went on you know, all three of these ships. I went into their kids areas. Um, I think celebrity is just started. This was, uh, they, this is their first summer having a ship in the Caribbean all summer. That's not normally their thing. Their ships are off doing other things. So they're trying to get into the family market. So you could tell on this, they were trying to adapt things to uh, welcome families. But at the same time, you could tell that There's the other crew There's a couple cruisers, of empty bo- vodka bottles. Play with those. <laughs> <laughs> but you could tell other crew- cruisers were really not eager to invite or to welcome so many kids on board. So there was this, there was this weird... Thing going on and so I thought some of the kids probably they were doing was really cool like they were doing this thing where throughout the whole week kids were getting GoPro cameras and they were in groups and they were uh, making videos and stuff like oh, that wow, and they were cool. learning how to edit the videos and uh, the celebrity ships have the eye lounges on board and so they were using that and then the end of it they were had a, a video so they, they were really and the kids programming um, they had daily programming scheduled like Royal Caribbean there were certain events or times where it was a per charge per child um, they really, you could see the, you could see where they were going with it. I got to speak to the counselors and they were bringing on, um, you know, educated, you know, equipped people to do this. So it wasn't just like, we're bringing the guys that work the bar at night to <laughs> hang out with the kids during the day. So there was some, there in was the some daytime, intent. In the daytime, their kids counselors at night, they paint the ship. <laughs> exactly. So they were really, like it was dedicated the space. captains down there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. with the kids. It was dedicated clubs. Um, I think they're doing really well with it. And their programming seemed to go a level above. Like they were really putting thought into what they thought families that would cruise their ships hmm. would want to well, do. I think the whole thing with the GoPro, I that's think awesome. that's really kind of... Exactly. Really kind of where just, we're at it's now. It's not yeah. kid storage. That's right. So um, our Alaska cruise, there were not many kids on that cruise. There were... What? Maybe not in your area. I was just going to say, they weren't in the casino. <laughs> they weren't in the casino? But where I was, was there really a lot I, of kids that, on that cruise? cruise was crawling with children, and they were all staying near me. <laughs> <laughs> And like, because we thought we found this perfect <coughs> quiet area to work, this library. 
And they were there all day. Oh, that's and right. I, think, I remember that now. Yeah, and part yeah, yeah, of the yeah. problem was that's funny. the weather didn't necessarily cooperate that right. cruise. So they weren't out at the pool deck. So they You were didn't all work inside. in the living room in your stateroom? <laughs> no, <laughs> I second. didn't. Yeah. No, I wasn't in the second bedroom in I my stateroom. I remember room. there being a lot of kids, but I remember Tracy complaining about <laughs> yeah, the fact. They, they were, <laughs> at one point, I was <laughs> working, and this kid crawled across the table where my laptop was <laughs> to the other side. And I just looked at her, and I said, really? And she laughed very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there were weren't a lot of kids maybe they were just maybe following, they just were following <laughs> me but there were and it was also summer though so i mean summer you're going to get a little bit more now the, i assume the disney ship didn't have many oh kids because it was a special sailing it was loaded man i have you gotten the whole off. kids thing you wrong. Are. but you have to keep in mind what happened, i run a company that specializes right. in family vacations but you know what happened with that two night though and i think it's a safe assumption what you said um because it was out of san diego on the west coast um I think what happened was a lot of West Coast people were able to sample Disney. Okay. There were more first-time cruisers on that cruise than I had experienced in a lot of other cruises. Just about every yes, where everybody's from, everybody was from within a ninety-minute drive. Of it's also you know the ship. you've committed to two nights exactly, and so you know you're getting in a little bit, and they never really sell so often. You can get a last-minute deal on them. Um, when people would ask where you're from, and I said from you came all the way here for a two-night cruise, like it was kind of weird. Um, so there were a lot of kids, but I think it was just a, a logistics proximity issue. Okay. So I, my it. assumption was going on the fact that those two would not have a lot of kids. Which ship had the most kids? Which It felt to me like the Royal Caribbean one had the most, and I might just be because there was nothing else for them to do. Mm -hmm. So the weather didn't cooperate. They couldn't be out swimming. The kids' programming is okay there. It's, it's growing, but I don't think... Rural Caribbean's put a lot of resources into Alaska kids programming. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? like that's not necessarily the demographic in Alaska. Um, I think Disney has the most kids, but feels like the least because they have things for them to do. They're keeping their kids busy. The kids are in, in and I mean, the kids area there. You know, when you look at, I, I'll include a couple pictures, um, but when you look at the pictures of where, of what Disney is doing in these kids' areas, there's no comparison. That's an I mean, these are fully themed mm -hmm. and immersive, and you can't, nobody can touch Disney with what they're doing with the kids. That's sort of the, you know, thing we hear from a lot of people in that the kids want to stay in the kids' programs. That's right. They don't want to come off, they that's don't right. even go off the ship yeah. when they're in port. So. And that's our biggest challenge as agents when we, when people want to try other cruise lines, often because of price, sometimes because they would just want something different or they want a different itinerary, is just understanding the kids' programming is just different. And it's not that Celebrity or Royal Caribbean are bad at it. It's that nobody can be as good at it as Disney is. I think I'm impressed, though. I, I, I think back to when I was a kid. Right. And I would have loved something immersive like that. That's right. something, a program that sort of went for a couple of days. Yep. I would have loved something like that. I mean, right. they didn't have GoPros when I was a kid. Sure. They didn't have lights when I was a kid. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But, but everybody get those, you know, those cameras where the picture comes out and then you shake the Polaroids. <laughs> yeah, we got Polaroids. Right. I still have a Polaroid <laughs> camera. Don't make fun of me. Um, I think that's really cool because there are kids, well, that's a group activity. Right. It's also kind of... Right. There's some solitary activity yes. to it, too. And I think that would appeal to a great many kids who yep. are not joiners. Yep. And I think celebrity, I like where they're going with it. They're kind of, they're, um, I think their intent is we've got the babysitting rooms. You know, some ships are, you know, cruise lines are doing the babysitting rooms. And we're not Disney. Um, and I think they kind of, their tagline is modern luxury. I think that's so, it. This seems more modern. So what would families who would cruise on a tag you know on a ship where the tagline is modern luxury what would their children want to do right so it looks like they're trying to elevate the program um th they're not there yet it's going to take some work but i think they did a really i think the intent is there and i really liked where they were going with it and i think they had spaces and again keep in mind i was on one ship i also <laughs> you think know? that, yeah, that appeals i i don't mean to belabor this but i'm intrigued by this i think that also appeals to that group that ages out of disney's kids exactly programming. Yep. Where you might get a 14 year old who is right. interested in this activity, you know, right. or a 15 year old. Where on the other ones, it's kind of like it seems that they do things for younger children. Right. And then when they get to that age group, it's kind of like here's a kids club where I'm yep. going to put all of you. Yeah. There's there's some movies and some video games. Um, right. Go have at it. Um, I think Celebrity does not have the reputation of a family cruise line. They don't. They just have it as, you know, it's a, more of an adult, more of an mm -hmm. older. And they're trying to, you know, appeal to more 
I would say our age, like we found there was a lot of people in our, you know, the 40 to 60 kind of age range. Um, we also found with celebrity, these people are having fun. Like, and I noticed that on the first one, Ben and I both commented on the first one. We'd go to dinner and there was kind of like an area where they'd have dancing before dinner. And there was couples out dancing like all the time. Mm. And it's just, you know, people sitting at a bar, but they were all chatting and getting to know each other. It was just a different level. It's hard to explain, but it just seemed like there was a different level of engagement of the passengers to each other. You see that on the talk about this. Yeah. And I've already been on the celebrity website. I want to. I want to go on. Have to go on. Yeah, Royal Caribbean. That happens to a certain extent. It does. If you are a drinker, right? I mean, you certainly see that in the mm-hmm. bars and stuff. But we don't. do You that see anymore. that in the casino too, right. with people yep. getting to know yep. each other because they're seeing. Except there's no fun in the casino. <laughs> and one of our no, it's very sad. It's all one of our money. favorite things on the celebrity ship was there's a cafe and it was always open in the afternoon. You know, we'd got it was very hot, so we'd get off and kind of enjoy a little bit of the island. But I am not, I'm not doing these for the itinerary. Honestly, you could take me out on, on just about any island, turn me around three times, I couldn't tell you where I was. Right. Like it's just it's not my appeal. So we'd get off, we'd investigate a little bit because Chris just needs to get on land. Um, and then we'd be back on the ship for the afternoon. And it was fairly quiet. And we'd go to this cafe and we could order a specialty coffee or a specialty tea. And they always had little treats in the cabinet. And across the way was where you could get, oh my God, I'm having a senior's moment. It's not ice cream, but it's better. Gelato. 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 <laughs> There was a gelato. She looked at the chubby boys for this. <laughs> I enjoyed the, yeah. the Jeopardy clue. Yeah, exactly. It's not ice cream. It's better. What is gelato? Exactly. Exactly. So there was like a gelato place right by there. And we just took out a deck of cards and we played. You know, Chris and I had never played cards together. We didn't know how. And we had to Google how to play cards. <laughs> But you this, are right. You are getting so it's old true. so fast. But what it was is like happening? the best week because we were just stuck. Because you still want to be out. You want to be meeting people. You want to enjoy, you know, a drink. And it was just something. And we found that there was all these. We brought our cars with us on Disney. We couldn't find anywhere to play. Hmm. Like there wasn't that those spaces to do that. We play cards when we travel. Unfortunately, we have to be sequestered because <laughs> it gets full contact. <laughs> There's some curse words that come out of that mouth. <laughs> we play with the. Um, you've heard us talk of it, Jeff and Val. Mm-hmm. Valerie is competitive. Yes, to say the <laughs> least. So let's real quick. Kids program ship to ship. Rank them. Um, Disney one. I mean, head and shoulders one above anything that could ever ever happen at sea. I mean, Disney is just the best. Disney takes care of your kids like nobody else does. Mm-hmm. It's the issue once your kids have aged out of Disney. Um, I would. I'm struggling, but I'd have to give Celebrity 2 just because they had some of those innovative things that I hadn't seen elsewhere. Yeah. And then Royal and I think Caribbean that appe- 3. appeals to that age group. Yeah. Especially in this day and age. And, there, and there's not a big difference in the 2 and the 3. I mean, Royal Caribbean's doing what they do. You know, Norwegian, they're all kind of doing a kids kids programming, very yeah. similar. And they're all kind of Royal at Caribbean one level. takes your kids out for tattoos. And then Disney's Summer House. <laughs> <laughs> Piercings. <laughs> Piercings, that is. So, related to that, Related to um, what you talked about, how you thought there was this a 40 to 60 crowd, what do you think the appropriate demographic is for each of the cruises you took? So for okay. Disney. I'm going to forget the fact that Royal Caribbean was in Alaska because I think that changes things. I felt Royal Caribbean was really old. I felt it skewed really old. I don't know. Maybe it was just you know where what? we hung the, out. The thing is, Alaska skews really old. Yeah. So it's hard to compare it when you're... Alaska just automatically skews older. Well, that's because there's not a place for them to hang out on the pool deck. I right. Mean, Alaska's not a swimming vacation. Right. And it's just, you know, for it's always skewed older. Um, I think I think if you're adults and you're kind of at that age where you're cruising as adults um, and you want good food and good drink and maybe not all the pretense in the event, celebrity just, I know for us, Chris and I are in our mid-40s, Celebrity, we feel, is where we're at right now. We feel like that's what fits best for us. Um, I think when you've got families with younger kids especially, I think Disney is the one. The problem is sometimes when you're a family with younger kids, you're not at the at the place in life where you can afford Disney. Mm. So you're kind. it's kind of a catch-22 a little right, bit. Exactly, yeah. Um, but I think that's the age group for Disney. I think Royal Caribbean, once your kids are hitting that tween area, um, 
you know, Royal Caribbean, I think, is a good fit, well, especially the larger ships. They also do the thing where there's basketball courts and right. other cars, things and that are sports related. Yeah. I don't know. And rock yeah. climbing walls. Right. And, right. and so I think Royal that Caribbean. Monster slide. That's right. And especially on the, the newer ships, the larger ships, I think Royal Caribbean with the tweens and the teens, it's kind of your sweet spot. Um, but if you're, I think you know your kids better, but I think if you're, you know, your kids are a little more subdued, a little more interested in going to the eye lounge or, you know, different things. Celebrity could really be a good fit. I know I have a couple families that sail Celebrity Europe and they've done it a couple times now. And they said that was really a good fit for their families with their kids. Now, see, I think we're at the point where we've kind of, I've loved every one of my Disney cruises, Mm -hmm. but we're at the point now, like she says about the shows that at night we sort of look at each other and go, now what do we do? I haven't done a celebrity cruise, so I can't speak to that. But I know on Royal Caribbean, I can get dressed and go to one of the nicer restaurants. Yeah. But I can also stay in my shorts and my T-shirt and go to the bucket. and find something yeah. to eat. And we like a casino. So I find that for somebody like me, who isn't about the pomp and circumstance right. of getting dressed every night and taking those photos, mm-hmm. I, and I, I think it's great that if that's what you want to do, that's not where I want. That's not where I am. I don't want to do that. So I like the option of I can go to a chops yes. and dress up to go, or I can stay in jeans and a t-shirt and go to the buffet or go to any of the other quick service restaurants. And at night, if there's nothing else, I can go down and put a couple of bucks in the slot machine. And that's exactly where we are. And we're just not, um, for us, vacations, it's more, I plan vacations all the time. I don't want to plan my yeah, own. Yeah, I hear you. So when I want to be able to decide on the fly, you know, I want to get into chops tonight. Oh, I can't. Okay, I'll go to the buffet. I'm we're fine. We're talking with that. about this uh, river cruise, the ocean cruise we're doing. A lot of people are doing shore excursions in their dining in advance, and we just said we're just going to win. Yeah, it. I just we just want to. I win just it. I'm not there, and I don't. Yeah. I think it comes as you just said. I think it is a product of what we do. Yeah, I can plan your vacation, right. but when it comes to mine. I might just want to sit on the balcony and read. Yep. Let's say uh, Disney definitely doesn't have a casino. Celebrity Mm. has a casino. Loved Celebrity Casino for a couple of reasons. One, non-smoking. Whole thing non-smoking. Whole thing. Wow. Wow. The entire thing. The other thing I liked on this ship, um, they kind of had an entertainment area where the casino was in the middle of it. Open air on both sides. Kind of the way, almost the way you'd walk into one in Vegas. Wow. So, you know, like they had like like a hallway of shops. And the casino was kind of, you know, at the end of that, but you could access it from either side. It was kind of wow, open. That sounds great. Um, so I liked in the fact that it was no smoking. You didn't have the smoke raising we did up that to it. We a Norwegian ship where the, uh, the casino the smoking, was open. Right? And the, it was open to every bit. It was in the atrium, the yeah. lowest floor of the atrium. So every floor smelled like cigarette smoke. Yeah, and no smoking in the casino, so there wasn't that issue. Um, so we really liked it. Um, we didn't spend a ton of time there. I tried to... Not spend as much time there. It's a very different when I cruise with Chris. Hard, it's right. very different than when I cruise with you and Kevin. It's also hard to lose Chris when there's right. just right. the no, two of it you. It was hard, and it was open from both sides. I didn't know which way he was going to come, so I had to be careful. When you cruise with us, money. it's like who gets to the casino first? Right. right. That's part right, of the, right. that's part it's of the true. fun. It, the you know, when and when the three of us are cruising together, it's like you know that's where we have our best meetings. We always know if you're looking for somebody between you know double points, you know where to go. That's right. That right. So when I'm cruising with Chris, I have to be a little bit. So it's like, well, no, we can do this cruise because I won't spend as much in the casino. So so I didn't casino as much, but I really liked it. Um, and Disney doesn't have that. And for me, that's an issue. Mm-hmm. And it's not that necessarily I need to gamble every night. It's that I need another entertainment venue. I, that's exactly it. Yeah. That is exactly it. I find I, I'm not... I'm not, I I mean, like, I don't gamble in my Mm -hmm. regular life, but when I'm on a cruise ship and I don't drink, Mm -hmm. so sitting in a bar isn't fun. I have made friends with the people that are at the gambling tables with us. And by the second or third night, you're seeing the same faces over and over again. And it becomes this sort of social aspect as opposed to as sitting in a bar, which I don't, I don't do. Right. Now, I know you didn't stay um, suite level because you're not allowed to anymore after that <laughs> one time where you stayed in the better yeah, room exactly. than we did. Exactly. I, I don't that let time it that should not be mentioned. <laughs> exactly. It's not allowed anymore. She had a purple card. I did. And it However, did. on the new ships, one of the things that I think Royal Caribbean has done incredibly well mm-hmm. is their new suite programs. I agree. And the fact that there's this coastal kitchen that yep. we go to. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I know Disney's um, concierge level is very good. I don't believe it's as good as Royal Caribbean's. What do you think about Celebrity? Celebrity, I've not done it yet, but I will do it because it looks really interesting. Did you see their uh, um, areas at all? I saw they do have a separate restaurant um, for a certain level. See, Celebrity's a little bit different. We were concierge level, um, but they have concierge level, Aqua Club, and then Suites. So it really didn't get as much. The concierge level, we had one concierge that shared a bunch a bunch of people at my level. Um, there was a couple little things included. But for the most part, it was just basically I was in a veranda stateroom. Um, but the suite program, they do have a specialty restaurant, um, more like Norwegian, where they'll have, and the way Royal Caribbean has gone too, where you've got like the, the butler type person and um definitely an elevated i think much more like what royal caribbean is doing than what disney's doing i love i I, when we stay in a concierge level room i don't use any of that no i don't either um i'm excited that they refill my diet coke every day that's that's kind of the level i mean i don't go to the concierge lounge very often because the thing in the concierge lounge is they have hors d'oeuvres and drinks and again we don't drink I love the fact that they have set up this restaurant. Right. Um, I like the fact that the menu changes every yeah. day. I like the fact that I can go in and have dinner in 45 minutes mm-hmm. as opposed to the main dining room, which just becomes this, it's yeah. a show. It's, the, you know, everybody eats at the same time kind of thing. So I love that perk. The restaurant on this ship, I believe it was called Michael's for the sweet guests. And there's a less sweets kind of doing what Royal Caribbean is doing with that higher level suite category. So there were, there's less sweets. Um, it looked to be, it definitely wasn't as massive as the coastal kitchen that we were in on the Oasis. Um, but there was a specialty restaurant for, for sweet guests. Um, so, I mean, more of a sweet program. I find Disney, you're booking a club level room. Well, Disney also, again, very big difference ship to ship. Yeah. You're in the fantasy and the dream. I love their concierge lounge. And we could, a couple of times, where we got full on the stuff they serve there. The food was very yeah. good. I also have to say, we stayed in, I don't remember what the category was on the Disney ship, a one bedroom. It was a, th- a category three or whatever. Yeah, they don't do that tea. anymore. Tea now. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to tell you, the room was spectacular. Yeah, the yes. Was spectacular. Yeah. The room, the room is incredible. I would say. Yeah. I now I have, again I haven't been on Celebrity, but I have stayed in that level room on the right. Royal Caribbean ship, and the Disney ship was like you were staying in a luxury hotel. Right, and I think that's the dip. I think if you're trying to describe them, I think with Disney you are paying for the accommodations, which are grand, and you're paying for the you know the convenience of being able to book your onboard activities early is a really big deal for people on Disney. Um, so you have early access to that, early access to the cabanas on Castaway. Um, priority boarding, you've got a, the priority lounges, uh, you've got a dedicated concierge. So there's benefits there, but it's not a sweet program like what Royal Caribbean and Celebrity do, where is their program kind of follows you around the ship. It, it, it's really more of a you're an elevated guest that you've experienced throughout the ship. So it's it's different. Now, the funny thing is, I find sometimes with Royal Caribbean or Celebrity, like with Celebrity, often their specials, when you're booking a suite level, you're getting drinks included, you're getting Wi-Fi included, you're getting your gratuities included, often getting an onboard credit, like $150 a person. So there's benefits to that. And with Royal Caribbean, they do that as well. With Disney, there's not any really added... Right. Inclusions. Now, I will tell you something that Disney has that I wish every ship in the world had. Disney has a movie theater. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that elevates those ships for me. In my opinion, that's something that an an adult... Yeah, I agree. I could do that instead of a casino. I wish that... Because other ships don't have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Royal Caribbean Mm -hmm. tries to show movies out by the pool deck and things like that. And usually in the big theaters one night or even during the day. Celebrity had done that in the big theater. They had put... I forget what movie we saw there. might have been Beauty and the Beast, actually. The live action. So in the theater, they would play movies the odd time. They had a small little area off to the side. You know what they did interesting, though, on Celebrity? I'm just... Sorry, I'm kind of getting sidetracked. Um, You know how they always do their... Trying to get you to rebook... Yeah. seminars mm-hmm. the way celebrity did it they did a presentation on a destination oh. so they did one on they do galapagos cruises a very small expedition type they have special um, boats for it and very small very specialized cruising so they did 
a presentation on it. So we went to a couple of those where we were learning about a destination. Oh, that's cool. That they happen to sell cruises to. So I thought that was an interesting plus. But you're right. There were a couple times where we thought, boy, do we miss the Disney movie theater. Yeah, because if, like on a sea day, if you don't yes. want to lay by the pool, if it rains, yeah. it, it, that is, I love the, the In movie the theater. afternoon when you're at port, but you don't want to be like... You don't want to be at port anymore. You know, you want something else to do. We played cards. If we had a movie theater, we probably would have went to see a movie. And we went to the movie theater on the Disney Cruise Room in a suite in a concierge level room. And they like followed us and gave us popcorn and drinks and <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I really, I enjoy that aspect of it. Yes, yeah. I because agree. Because we don't, it seems like we don't have enough time to go to see the movies we want. And we've gone on cruises where we've caught up on things that we wanted to say. Disney has put it into the ship. I mean, Disney has put thought into it. They have looked at other cruise lines, what doesn't work, and they've improved it. Their staterooms, their, you know, the dining experience, the quality of the food, the movie theater on board. Now, I don't think a Disney brand stateroom is that much better than a Royal Caribbean Veranda State Room. I think Technically, they're it, bigger. It is, and I don't think you would ne- necessarily notice it because you're not in there with three or four people, right? Like if you had two kids, <laughs> if you had two kids with you and you were trying to figure out where to put stuff, yeah. I think you would appreciate some of the smaller nuances in a Maybe Disney cabin. Um, so I, I also think don't that's like why... the split bathroom. Right, and there's that as well. Because I am not built for the split bathroom. Right. I used to I love need... the split bathroom, and you said you didn't, and I thought, eh, I don't know if I agree with him, until I started sailing without the split bathroom. And I was like, oh, no, he's right. Because here's the deal. As two adults, you can figure it out. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Stay out of here. We have a rule right. in our house that when it's my turn in the bathroom, it's like the Lion King. Right. I own everything the light touches. <laughs> I'm in there for 20 minutes a day. Yeah. Figure it out. Right. Yeah. Brush your teeth out in the kitchen sink. For 20 minutes a day, right. I own everything the light touches. Right. And jumping back and forth between yeah. a split bathroom Was had no plus? appeal right. to me. And I can see the appeal for... For people with small kids, or three or four people in a room, who exactly. Want to that's exactly true. Right. And I think time. that's probably why you don't see the difference in the veranda. But I, those Disney veranda, veranda state rooms are larger. Like, I often don't need the veranda. I rarely step out there. But I find on other cruise lines, I need to book a veranda state room to get the inside space I need. Whereas with Disney, I can book an inside cabin and basically still have the same amount of inside space. So there's, you know, the way that they organize things in the stateroom to have lots of storage and things. I think there's little things that you would appreciate if you were trying to put things away for four people. I know that um, Royal Caribbean can be significantly less to spend than Disney. What about celebrity? Where does it fall on the spectrum? I think it's somewhere in the middle. And I found that celebrity priced a lot closer to Royal Caribbean. When we booked our cruise, there's always different promotions. Royal Caribbean and Celebrity always have different promotions. They do. Different offers. They are the same company. They are. That's right. Um, and and nor all of the cruise lines do that. They always have different promotions happening. Disney doesn't do doesn't that. Doesn't do it, right. <laughs> Disney also has four ships, so let's be fair. They And they don't need to do all these promotions to fill them. Um, so with Celebrity, the cruise that we booked, we had um, included a $300 onboard credit. We had what was called a concierge level, like I said, which basically was just a veranda with a couple extra perks. Um, it, we got to choose a perk. We could have chose from free beverages. One, we were able to choose two perks. One was the we took the onboard credit for $300. And then out of the others, we chose the free Wi-Fi for the week because that was important for us. So free unlimited Wi-Fi, yeah. that's a big, big value. Savings. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. So that would have been, had we bought those packages, it would have been 250 bucks each. So that was a savings of $500. I want to say the cruise cost us somewhere around $2,800. Per person. Total. Wow. Wow. Holy smokes. So it comes in. I think when did you, you get into the... Did you actually go anywhere? We did, yeah. <laughs> and I think when you get into the suites, there's a big difference between veranda price and suite price. So there's a big gap. Um, but at the level we were, it was August. So it wasn't as... You know, it's not a very... And they were just kind of putting a ship in the Caribbean. So I think there were some reasons why it was a little bit less expensive. Um, but on average, I find the celebrity and the Royal Caribbean prices to be pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. And a good. little bit more, but often some more perks. Keep. I did mention that they always offer promotions. I just have to say something on that. Every time we get a new promotion or a discount with Royal Caribbean, it goes by today's price. 
They don't price protect from the day you booked. So people will email me and say, oh, I saw their kids sale free now. Yeah, they do. But when you booked 30% off everybody, your rate was better. The rate you started with all was the time. Better. We see it all the time. Yeah. The promotion that's out now is always the best if you haven't booked already. Right. You're not, it's not retroactive to other stuff. We see that. Well, now they're giving a free beverage package. Yes. Yeah, but you're going to give up. That exactly. great price. Or so that I'm always checking. And so this is this is the challenge when you sell Royal Caribbean. It's just about every week or two weeks, you're rechecking everybody every for week, discounts. Every three days. It seems like it. It seems <laughs> like, like it. Smoke, and so you kind of get to learn, okay, I already know, and I'll kind of notate, okay, like, right, okay, this person has kids sale free. It's got to be a really big deal mm, to bypass to buy that. Buy, yeah. And so you kind of learn that way. But just know that there's always discounts and promotions. It doesn't necessarily mean your price is always lowering. It just means we're making sure that you got the best deal. That's not unusual in the travel industry. Yeah. I would deal a great deal with ABD. That is the same thing. If yeah. ABD has a trip that's not selling and they put out a promotion, it's on the current price. Right. It doesn't go back to what you paid. Exactly. And see, Cruise Line um, protects price. So with Cruise Line, I can change categories. And the categ- the price I'm paying for this new category, I'm, I said Cruise Line, Disney hey, Cruise, Cruise Line. Line yeah. With Disney Cruise Line, if I change categories, you're paying the price of what that category was on the day you first booked with Royal Caribbean or Celebrity. If I change categories, you're paying the new price as of today for that category. But that doesn't work with Disney Cruise Line when there's a promotion. Exactly. If there's any kind of yeah. a promotion. Yeah, depending on what it is. You're right. Um, with There was one thing I wanted to say. Oh, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity have both come out with non-refundable deposit programs. Mm-hmm. I know we've talked about those on other shows, so I won't go into a lot of detail. Um, but just be aware sometimes when you're looking on their site, the price you're seeing is if you take the non-refundable deposit program. So it's new. They're trying it. Royal Caribbean tried it. I think it really worked because they're continuing it and now celebrities starting to do it. Um, it's an interesting program. You can get some deals by willing to commit, say, yeah, we know we're going on that cruise. Yep. So Disney at this point doesn't have anything like that. All their deposits are refundable except for suites. Suites are non-refundable. True. All right. Do we have sort of a, do you have a summation of, of these three? Is there something you want to say, sort of a blanket? Um, what I want to say is basically what we talked about with the demographics. There isn't a one size fits all. There's not a perfect cruise for I, every single person. I think it's a matter of weighing the pros and cons of each and figuring out what works best for your family. Um, sometimes it's price. Sometimes it's budget. I don't want anybody to think because their budget is only a celebrity or a Royal Caribbean cruise only. I don't want them to think that it's not worth it. If I can't do Disney, I might as well not cruise. I don't think that's the case. Oh, absolutely not. You know, yeah, so I don't want sure. anybody to feel that just because we're saying Disney is so much better for families that there's not something to be had or to be benefited from from these other lines. I could equate it to buying a car. Right. If you buy a car, all cars kind of do the same job. Yep. It depends on the, the things you want in your car. Right. The extras or the, the, extras and the, the fancy pluses. trim and all that stuff. That's right. And so That's it's all about too. expectations. It's all about, you know, the, the role of your travel agent is to really manage your expectations. I don't want you to think, well, look at that Royal Caribbean was $3,000 cheaper. Don't think you're going to get Disney. Right. You're not going to get Disney quality at Royal Caribbean prices. It's, There's a compromise somewhere in the What's middle. interesting is because we are really different in the travel industry, right? Right. We get people who either first have sailed Disney or mm-hmm. only sailed Disney yes. and are now trying these other cruise lines. But think about Royal Caribbean's fleet is huge for a huge. reason. Yeah. Because people tra- have been right. sailing with them forever and yeah. sail with them over and over and right. over again. So, you know, I know that people have Disney in their head that nothing's going to ever be as good as Disney. I think there are options out there that are just as good depending on your situation. Exactly. And that's just the thing. Cruising is not one size fits all. You know, for some people, itinerary matters. For some people, it's ship. And some people are locked into a date and a budget, and we find the cruise that's going to work with that. So, you know, I'm just saying there's other cruise lines out there. For me, um, I was a real Disney fan for a long time. My first Disney cruise was just over 10 years ago. And I've since done 16, 17, 18, whatever it is. Um, I love it. And I can still see the value in it. It's just not for me anymore. Mm-hmm. There also, uh, You also have to speak to the point that there comes a point where after you've done 16 or 17, and I would put myself in that category, that you want to try something different. Yeah. That 
it's like going back to the same restaurant over and over again. That's great. I go back to the same restaurant and most of the time order the same thing I love. But it's fun to try something new. Exactly. That's exactly it. And for us right now, celebrity is it. Is it? And we cannot wait to get on another celebrity ship. What's your level at Royal Caribbean? What's your perk level? Your status? Um, did I put you on the spot? I you remember. did. I don't remember. I'm third up. Diamond or Diamond Plus? No, I think I'm a f- I'm. Th- Half a cruise away from Diamond is where I'm at. So is that Emerald? I don't remember. I'm, it was so I'm long ago, a, I don't remember yeah, what I it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm below, somewhere yeah. below your 800 nights. <laughs> because that makes a difference, too. It does, absolutely. There are perks. There are, yep. I think Royal Caribbean does a much better job with that loyalty program than Disney does. And i got to tell you, if I had the dollars to spend... Um, Royal Caribbean Suite program, like when we did that on the Oasis, that was a great week. Mm. Um, and it had little to do with the cruise. People I know came to your room and made drinks. Right. Like with a little cart. <laughs> so, but it's like, that's they really brought you cool. presents. Yeah. And that genie guy saved my seats. <laughs> he saved my seats in the shows with a rope across them. And we just walked down just before it started and sat there. I have a question to ask you. Does the loyalty program jump between uh, Royal Caribbean it's and Celebrity? Not exactly it, it's even. not exactly but I was able right. to I was able to match it. Yeah. So when I signed up for Celebrity, even though I, on my first cruise, even though I had not cruised Celebrity, they matched the level which is their equivalent. It's right. not the exact same program, but they gave me their equivalent with them. So I started out with that and they do that in the reverse as well. Oh, good. Yeah, so I was difference. able to get that and that got me some extra perks on board as well. So I like their loyalty yeah, the program. Royalty yeah. program the, I, the, I'm only familiar with the Royal Caribbean one, but it's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Tracy. We appreciate it. If you're interested in a Royal Caribbean cruise line sailing, write to Tracy directly. T R A C E Y H at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and she'll be happy to get yeah. you a quote. And even, a celebrity, if you're interested in a celebrity or what did a Royal I say? Cri- you said Royal Caribbean. I'm sorry, I meant celebrity. Yeah, but if you're interested either, in, either or, um, and Disney as well. And if you have a, an agent at Dreams, a lot of our agents, like me, do sell other cruise lines. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like, you know, if you already have an agent you're working with, certainly contact them. And, and, and if they're not doing it, they'll tell you and they'll get you in touch with somebody who does. Yep. But if you're interested, please contact us, let us know. Um, And we will make sure we get you a no obligation quote for whatever you're looking for. Excellent. Thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you everybody at home for listening and watching. We hope you have a great week and we hope you have a great vacation.